this video you will guys see the difference between a master and a grandmaster in chess. I will have 5 minutes to solve 3 chess positions and I will do it together with my fiancé and grandmaster GM Noel Studer. Let's go! Hello Noel! Are you ready for this challenge? Yes I am, let's do it! Okay, so let's get started with the first puzzle. We have 5 minutes to think. In this position is black to play and we just have to find the best move. Okay, time is up. And guys, now I will first be giving my solution and then Noel will tell his opinion. And then, of course, we will check the book. First of all, <laughs> I, I, re I really was looking for... Uh, this is a puzzle, so I was looking for uh, force moves, so for captures, attacks, checks, and I didn't find anything. So I was a little bit disappointed. The first move I saw, I saw this diagonal that was weak. And so I said, oh, e5, let's sacrifice a pawn, and then let's go to give a check there. But then I realized that there is a queen that just covers, and I achieved nothing. So I had to come up with other ideas. And now I first trying to, um, second, uh, second step, I tried to ask myself, what is the white threat? Because basically, once you have to make your move, the opponent made another move before you. And so you have to ask, and probably will have been either c5 or knight here and uh, I'm looking that this pawn can take here and then this pawn could be hanging this is this seems to me like a threat which is not really hanging because the knight is protecting <laughs> but it's okay okay if I develop this knight then this pawn can be captured so it's not so easy for me to develop and to move on my pieces also if i capture here because this is also a move that we have to consider the knight is taking back this pawn is going to be weak and i really hate my position another move that we have to consider is of course to push here so to block the position and to kick the knight out and after thinking about this position and saying like i hate this position for black i've come up with just one idea that i have the bishop here right this is my only advantage so if i can open up the position this would be like a success for me. And so I want to play first b4, kick this knight back, and then I want to play f6 and e4. This is my answer. Should I correct where you said the wrong piece movements or? <laughs> <laughs> no, just, yeah, you can correct if I said some wrong things, of no, course. No, no, don't worry. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. Actually, I find the position is nice because initially, I didn't know if it was a tactical exercise or a positional exercise. And uh, then you shortly checked if the position is right after like three, four minutes. And so I, I got uh, the, the point O, um, which kind of exercise it is. But it just shows that when you don't know, like in a well, game... You, ju you just saw that we took it from this book. Right strategical play so that's what the information he, he got so my point is that it's much harder if you don't know if you know this is a strategic exercise there are some moves that come to mind um if you think that it's a tactical exercise other moves come to mind for example this move e5 i had the same idea if you think that it's a tactical exercise seems like the only move okay gotta open up and then sacrifice something queen h4 check whatever but i also thought about that move doesn't seem to work at all i don't simply don't see a continuation i thought about e5 f takes e5 uh, attacking the e3 pawn then after e5 f takes can e5 you, can you show with arrows please? yes uh can i not show the position you sure 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 so i i thought about this right this is also what you said f takes e5 and now the problem is always if this check the queen just comes in between so that shouldn't work uh then i was thinking about queen to g5 and then maybe attacking this e3 pawn you can also play bishop h6 later on. But I don't think it's even so bad for white to do something like that and to just move their king for a while. Wow. Then play knight f3, attack the queen, and I don't see how exactly we really have that much counterplay going on. So I think that is probably not the right solution. Then when I think about strategic idea, one main thing that comes to mind is actually bishop to h6. So in those structures where you have everything on the, or the most important pawns on the white square, I want to exchange that bishop. Actually, I also thought about bishop f5, but that would just exactly. lose a pawn. Bishop f5 <laughs> is giving away a pawn. So, so what I was thinking about um, for the last few minutes was bishop a6. And now let's say white just makes a random move, knight to f3, so for example. I'm happy about that. Okay, I managed to exchange that bishop. Uh, things seem better because the thing is now I might even be able to play b5 and lock down the position once I'm rid of that bishop and then I can slowly um, bring my knight into the game and I'm not that dissatisfied with that position. I can actually also tactically maybe 
group my knight even um so many different ideas so i think after bishop to a6 what you want to look at is what happens if white takes takes and takes this point. that was what i was then starting to because calculate c6 is now hanging exactly because c6 is now hanging so what are we doing i think we have to take i don't see anything else um queen takes c6 knight takes knight to b4 so now we're attacking the queen we have this knight attacked and we have this four kill so it starts to get interesting that's what i tried to calculate in my head go queen b5 attacking that knight still protecting the knight and protecting the d3 square yeah. so it starts to heat up right it's uh might be a strategic exercise, but sometimes for making a strategic move, you need to calculate. That mm -hmm. would be my interpretation. We might see in the book that it's completely wrong. Um, a rook take a four could be exactly. A so I looked at the rook takes a four. White has to take knight to d three check, and now the king protects uh, the rook. Very important not to go here because we have mm -hmm. actually two forks that are pretty but good. But the royal fork is better. Exactly. Let's take the lady. So this position, and now. Um, actually, when I look at it, I start to see that there are other moves than just taking that rook. Oh. Yeah. But what I was trying to evaluate was the position that we have, right? So we sacrifice the pawn, but this king is somewhere weird. But is it really weak because it's like it castled? So that's that was my main line, and I wasn't really sure how I was supposed to evaluate that whole I'm impressed, line. Impressed, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so actually, I would have played bishop to a6, but I'm not really sure if that's the right uh, right line. But here, like queen c7, rook c8 is, looks like very fast. Yeah, but there is queen c2, right? It's just, oh. it, it continues. Also, white can move away. We're very deep inside, but if you if you want to like really calculate deep on grandmaster level, it's okay to, to calculate these 10 moves ahead. And now we have a bishop that is not really good. We are pawned down. In this position, I would surely say black is doing very poor so okay. that's not something we want to do but maybe along the line there's something but that would be my my thought process and now five minutes was um a little bit short for me i have to be honest but i would like to do something active and then there is always also this thing like you know that it's an exercise so maybe you're more likely to actually go for that and what do you think about my idea b5 and then f6 e5 yeah i think that's also interesting uh, locking down and going f6 e5 the question is, is it is it tactically working? But actually, it might. You know, it's uh, it's certainly one of the two possibilities. I would say going for e5 is the second very important thing. And talking now, actually, e5 takes e5. So this one and playing f6 and just sacrificing positionally might also be an idea. Now I would need some time to assess this. But or, this... or always, I mean, I'm always scared of leaving the pawn on b6. But of course, the move. But I also don't want to bring that knight back to a better square, right? As long as we have that knight on b8, I think it's good to keep that knight on a3. Because that knight suddenly, it starts to jump around and defend the king's side. So we don't want to do that. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, that's the idea. I can't provide a full solution, so I'm very curious to see. All right, solution time. This is tense. My heart is going up. What is happening? She doesn't find the solution. <laughs> By the way, this game was played between Wang Gao and Carson. Wang Yue is a different one. Ah, Wang Yue. I'm sorry, a different one. <laughs> <laughs> and the move is E5, wow. actually. My first idea. Wow. We were we were feeling right, but... Uh... Actually, you found the solution at the last second. It's F6, it's F6 yeah? It's F6. Yeah, that was... It somehow, somehow didn't get to my mind too early, but looks very interesting. E5 and then F6, just opening up everything. Mm. Do we want to see how the game went shortly? Yeah. E5? So I think D E5 is just bad, I thought. Uh, D5 was, was played, yeah? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so there was actually this F E5, Bishop H6 was an idea actually written in the book, right? So I saw some ideas, but we didn't, didn't completely find, find the whole way. Okay, so D takes E5 was played. Yes. Then F6. Okay. Uh, e take and Queen takes. Okay. Now White has this weak pawn on E3. A uh, very strange knight on a a4. I can see that counterplay coming in quick. Yeah, knight out, knight of three, and queen e7 attacking the pawn. Okay. And now king f2 to attack the pawn. Needs to run away. b5. Okay. Knight c3. And now finally we can bring that knight, yeah? Yeah, on a6 is going. Ah, knight to a6. Because yeah. it's also threatening maybe knight b4. Yep. We're taking the pawn back, basically by force. Yeah, queen d2 is played. And now we take it. Knight takes c5. Yeah, I think this is a good moment to assess. Like, if you see that, 
then you know you did it well with with e5 and f6 right you don't you don't need to see further probably um yeah once you see the f6 idea you don't just go for the oh i i have to mate immediately but i can play f6 i think i should have been able to find it. but i'm just curious <clears throat> am i allowed to switch on the engine and see sure. what bishop h6 just to to try to understand that's what i do when i calculate something so yeah we see that e5 is the best move f6 actually also good. Hmm. so bishop a6 so i'm happy it's not a catastrophe right so it's equal knight takes a6 and now the computer doesn't want to take here okay because here you're better because suddenly okay oh and this is very interesting so why I... computer just snatches the pawn on a2 but there are different moves actually e5 right now queen d6 so now it starts to be very concrete but it's a position where black can also run some risk and when I see the position after a5, e5, I do agree that e5 is, is very beautiful. e5 and f6 opening up. Nice. Are you satisfied? I mean, Carlson is good. He's kind of good. <laughs> okay, you can choose a, another puzzle. Okay, let's just go. To... Okay, black to play. So you have to switch the play. Yeah, I, I'll let you do this. <laughs> yeah, a very hard task. Okay, let's go. So we'll take five minutes from here. See you in five minutes. All right, we are ready. Actually, we thought just four minutes because Noel after two told me I've got this. And uh, I said like, okay, I also have an idea. I'll just say it. So uh, Black is right now two pawns down and we have a queen that is attacking a rook and a bishop and things doesn't look too well from the material side for Black. Of course, there is a very a move like rook b7 that at least can be considered that is protecting but then i after rook b7 i immediately saw oh rook a8 there are already troubles maybe then rook c7 queen b8 so if we just zoom in the queen side the situation doesn't look any good for uh for black but then of course you you have some bright news on this king side because there is a queen and a rook that are ready to attack and the first move that i was considering was bishop takes the idea of this move is that, uh, of course, after pawn takes, I think we just have... I think you can move, do the moves, yeah? Uh, I prefer not to okay, do the moves. Okay. Uh, and, and then, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, we can do the moves. <laughs> and no, then... I just want it for them. So usually when, when one solves an exercise, you want to keep the position on the board. You don't want to do moves. But just maybe it's easier to understand. No, you're right. And, and then I think there are check checks and it should be a force made by checks. So I'm not sure, maybe just this is even forced, this is even forced. I, I'm not sure, I didn't see until the end, but this seems like there must be something. Maybe bing boong, also this bishop is coming bing, boom, bang, to give somewhere. a check. Somewhere there must be, maybe you tell me, what is the checkmate here? I think there are many, yeah. Ah, okay, I also see many checkmates. Uh, queen h4, I, I think you can just take and play queen h4, one checkmate next point. There's ah, no, yeah, because there are basically no Basically no defense against it. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's also queen g4, queen hd, everything is checkmate. Yeah, every, I mean, this, I think this is very clear. Bing, bong, king goes here. And now if we give a check, there is still knight there. Exactly, and then you take the pawn on h4 and you take the knight next move for check. And ah, yeah, that's so cool. Very, like this. Yes. By the way, there is queen f7. <laughs> that's not good. That's not good. That's something I mean. Wait, wait, wait. There is this one. Da, da, da. Go, go because this is uh, the other <laughs> call one, an yeah. ambulance, but not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that would be very bad. So you bad. have to be precise even even there. But I think, as I said, queen takes h4 just in, in instant. Ah, okay, just this one. Because you're threatening okay. checkmate in one. I want to put just the eval. Yes. Okay, it's made in four. Made in four. Good it's, job. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> okay, and so, uh, of course, like, we are not playing checkers, we are playing chess, so Bla white is not forced to, to take this bishop. And there is a rook hanging, so I was thinking about uh, queen takes. And then I thought, like, there is a beautiful move here, which is bishop d8. Uh-huh. Do you like this move? Good. Oh! <laughs> Did I find a solution? <laughs> because I thought, like, there are no checks anymore. Oh, wait, there is a check here that I just noticed. <laughs> but okay, the king is hiding and there are no other checks. And the point is that after queen takes, there's no that check, so the bishop is interfering, and then we slide the queen here and it'll give mate. This is all I saw. That's I didn't nice. see any other move. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I think 
generally at the beginning of the position, last position we said it's not so clear if it's a tactical or a positional exercise. This should be very clear. Like you are two pawns down. Your pawn structure is absolutely catastrophe. Two pieces of your hanging. You have arguably worse development. Like you got to do something with black. <laughs> okay. If you just play some normal moves, you will lose that game. So I think that's very important to understand. And then you see that the white king is actually quite weak. Yeah. So what comes to mind is just opening up that king with force by bishop takes h4. That was also the first move I saw. And then uh, I think that's that's nice what you saw. Okay, let's take that rook. And the problem is if we continue taking here, then white takes with a check. You're and then we can't really get out with the king, right? At least white has a perpetual. Mm -hmm. At least. That's the very least that happens. Uh, king needs to move up and we give a check. Remember, the bishop is not here anymore, so it's a check. And we can't escape. Maybe white even has a win. So okay. that's where I stop and I say I'm not so happy. And that's when I also realized bishop to d8. Very nice move. And I think one thing you could have still calculated. Again, this, I think that that was my whole idea from the beginning. Um, it's important to just see the the, may, the way until mate. Not say there will be many ways, but it would be good to know one way that certainly gets to But you know, mate. I have the intuition. Exactly, the intuition like we did with knight g5 and getting mated ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and and then I love this move, bishop d8. I also found that pretty early. Um, I think it's important to note that this would be... Yeah, I saw, I saw this. Idea. Actually, ah, so I you saw, saw this. That, yeah? But you can tell. Queen h3. And now if the king goes back, we have an h1 mate. And if the king moves here, then now the bishop again is beautiful on the 8th rank because we have a checkmate. Mate. This is so beautiful. No? Yeah, this is very beautiful. So... Um, that is checkmate. And then actually I saw that very quickly. And then I thought, ooh, maybe after bishop h4, maybe I'm missing something after this move. Suddenly came to my mind. Because after bishop f6. Counter idea. Yeah, bishop f6 is actually the, the move that just wins. But knight take f6? And g takes f6. So the whole idea is now if we take that rook, right? White takes the rook on b8 and the attack is stopped for a moment. And maybe white can recover somehow. So... Bishop f6, knight f6, g takes f6. And I again don't see how white is stopping checkmate along the h file. So I'd be curious uh, what Mr. Augard again says in his book. But I would be pretty confident that bishop takes h4 is the move to play. The game went exactly as you showed. Bishop take h4 and then rook takes c6. c6. Can we show it on the board? So this is the right solution. And in the game, rook takes c6 happened. Yeah. But Agard mentions that if you take, you need to see that brilliant point to black split. So that's very nice, a very nice move. Okay, so white takes on c6. Bishop f6. And we go here and it's written the symbols, right? Yeah. And there also, you can play bishop takes g3. Okay, but we prefer bishop f6. Rook takes c8, rook takes c8. Ah, so, so he sacrificed his rook because there is no, no defense otherwise against checkmate. And now f3. Oh, no, no sorry, king, king g2. g2. I was reading the black move. <laughs> ah, and now this, that's actually beautiful. That's how the game stopped. But again, here, at least we know we won an exchange now and we have an ongoing attack. At least that's much better than the initial position, right? And F3 is winning immediately. Because it's a force made after pawn takes. Exactly. Now the king cannot move anymore to that beautiful square, which is obstructed by the own pawn and we give a checkmate. I like queen h3 precise because you're controlling the f1 square. Exactly. You always got to be precise until the last moment, right? This, this the king is running this, away. This the king is running away. So that's that's not what we want. Yeah, I, I I would say it's very nice to see bishop d8. But in a perfect world, rook takes c6 is probably something you at least want to spot as an idea. Sorry. Well, it's fine. <laughs> Let's go to the next puzzle. This is the final puzzle for today. Is black to play? And we'll be taking again five minutes. Okay, so uh, again, four minutes. Uh, I, the first thing that I, I, first of all, I love this position because I have the bishop here. I see that there are some weaknesses around the king. Material is equal. I have two nice bishops and I see that this pin is very important, especially because the the extra piece that I have is, a, is well, not the extra piece, but the, the, the difference is between black and white is that I have the dark square uh, bishop and my opponent has a knight, but this knight is pinned. And so the first move that I saw it was this check. 
and to see if it made sense. So I gave a check, the king had to move here, I don't see any other square, the knight cannot take of course because the queen is pinned, any other move makes no sense, so the king has to move here uh, or here. And after king h1 I was calculating bishop take h3, but then after pawn takes, queen takes, just queen h2 can be played and honestly I didn't see a way to, uh, to keep going. Um, and then after king here or king there, whatever, uh, I saw a very fancy idea. So this bishop right now is blocked. So my first wish was to make this pawn disappear so that the bishop uh, would be super strong and I could maybe bring the queen here and give checkmate. Now this is chess, is not like magic, so I cannot make this pawn disappear. And so I thought about giving this check and uh, then bring the rook, the bishop here, attacking this rook, and then bringing the bishop here. Uh, because once the bishop is here, I just can take here and then go queen g3 and give mate next. Also, I was looking after bishop here uh, that sometimes I can have a, a very fancy rook d2 because the knight cannot take and then I can uh, maybe sacrifice this bishop eventually here. So, but after this, honestly, after this boom bang, I think the rook goes here. So I don't have the idea of rook d2 and, and then I thought like bishop f4 and I must be winning. That's all you saw, yeah? Yes. <laughs> So I like the confidence. <laughs> I was there, but I wasn't like I would have liked to see a very precise way to win, which I couldn't find at the moment. I tell you, I'm I have the intuition. It's just the feeling. Yeah? <laughs> it's just the it's feeling. Just... <laughs> when it smells, you just go for it, and either you win or you lose. It's fine. Yeah? <laughs> so Bishop C five, I think, very logical. Yeah, we have to. Like, we have to activate the most passive piece, we do it with a check, perfect. Then it's important to notice that white has two, uh, two squares, because that might make a difference. So let's think king h1 first. Bishop e3, you said something very beautiful. So for example, if rook to e1, we have an insane rook to d3. The knight cannot take because the queen is hanging, right? And the queen cannot take because the bishop is protected. So the queen needs to move, and once the queen moves, we take h3, and now we give a check. So that should work, right? So rook e1 is back. Let's we, put it on the board. Yeah, so let's, let's put this. That's the one of the beautiful ideas. Rook on d2, knight cannot capture. Then we just snatch the queen. And if the queen captures, well, we just take here. And if now the queen moves, there is no helping this poor king. So that is beautiful. This is basically what you saw, yeah? yeah. And I think the, the tricky point is like really finding the concrete win of this move. Because I was thinking, so there, there again, there comes in the difference. King h1, king h2 makes a difference. Because I was thinking, what if we play rook d2 also here? Because the, the oh. issue is if rook takes d2, right, we take on e4. Or on h3, and then f1 is ah, hanging. We take, oh, this I didn't see. Oh, Bishop h3 is much easier. Yeah. Bishop h3 is much easier, I didn't see that. So in that case, bishop h3 takes, takes, and now, Oops, Rook is hanging. <laughs> so I, I missed this detail. So what I wanted to say is that if we take here and white would play along, we would take this. That's why I said it's very important. Now we would take with check and then we would take that Rook as well. Ah. So that was my idea. And if the king is on h2, this is not with check and so the Rook exactly. can be moved. Exactly, so and this, then... is, this is why we have to <laughs> look go extremely back. So if we go here, right, that's what I try to calculate. If I do this exact same thing, it actually does not work anymore. Well, we just get into an equal end game because now, oops, it's not check and white can check themselves. Well, or, or the rook can just Or just away. move somewhere and it should be uh, more or less equal. Black is probably pushing a little bit, but nothing, nothing special. So king h2 might be the right move. And if we see the same thing here, rook d1 again is the idea. And if we play rook d2 and bishop h3, that doesn't work, right? So... The question really is, how do we win this exact position? Can't you win with the same? But maybe now, as we can play bishop f4 with a check, this helps us to do something like that. But again, I would, like, we give a check on h2, which is beautiful. Okay, are but we... then check on g3, we take the pawn on g2. Yeah, but are we 100% sure? Let's say we go on, bishop c2, check. Alessia's sure, yeah? I would send it. Send it. Just send it. What are you doing here? Now why does the threatening checkmate? I'm not that sure that 
it looks good. No, but... no, but I didn't see bishop f2. Bishop c2, why was the bishop on c2? How did that bishop arrive there? So that that, that would be the, the sequence I try to calculate. I try to finish, but I, I really couldn't find a concrete one. Okay. But I, like, that's the problem. Now we have an exercise. I would be 99.9% .9 sure that bishop c5 is the right move, followed by bishop e3. But it would be, I guess, the idea that one finds the full line until the end. Yeah, for sure. Now, again, these are exercises mostly aimed at... Four minutes. <laughs> FIDE master, international master, grandmaster, and you take a little bit more time. But if I would be still active myself and like try to push myself, I would expect to find the exact precise moment where, how, with which move order exactly am I winning exactly how? And I couldn't find that. So let's try to see what the beautiful book says. Okay, so we have bishop c5. Wait, there is no king h2. The book doesn't even mention king h2. <laughs> how is the book I not don't. mentioning king h2? <laughs> Are we missing something very trivial? I mean, I told you probably the king h2. That, that is very good. Just so. bishop f4 and whatever, yeah? But Can we put the evaluation board just to understand if it's very simple? Ah, no. It's 1.3 for black, right? So it's, it's probably... At this moment, I really want to understand. Yeah, so this... I have to be very honest here. This, I think, is actually quite a bad exercise in that way. If he doesn't, if he doesn't explain me what is happening... Because, yeah, okay, it's nice. I play rook e4. It's the only move to get serious advantage, right? And the second best move or is... Bishop f4 check. Yeah, but then he goes back on e3 and then he plays rook. So that's a little bit of trolling. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. b5 or rook to d4. Okay, rook d4, nice. I attack e4. I can understand that. But it's a little bit strange that at least king h2 is not even mentioned. Confuses me a little. Bit. Because yeah, here, what I see right now, and maybe let's go back to the book and not to the engine, but it does seem like rook d2 is, is the bomba. Alessia obviously closed the book and uh, now we're... For me, it was over. <laughs> so rook cd1, bishop take h3. So he wants to take h3 and after g takes h3, okay. Can we so look he at... had something else, yeah? Aha. Uh -huh. So apparently this is uh, absolutely winning, yeah? Bishop takes h3, gh. Now you take d1, rook has to take because if the queen takes, it's make in one. And now we take here and then we take here and, and we'll... Can we say, we'll can we there. see our line? Yep. Rook d2. It's a crazy move. Okay, rook take d2. And also other moves, actually. Yeah. That's a, a little bit too fancy. This move, bishop takes e4. That was what I was calculating if the queen would do, would move away. I wasn't sure. Mm. So yeah, we, we both missed the killer blow right here because it's bishop takes h3. And now because this rook is here, we can capture it. The rook is deflected and now we take here because wait if the queen takes is important it's checkmate in one right i mean i didn't i, I needed some time to see that oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now there's no no queen running over yeah <laughs> and uh checkmate in one so it is a combination of threatening rook to d2 that's why white has to go rook d1 and then we actually exchange that rook. and okay. it's again and after the rook exchange again so rook after take here, d1 yeah. rook take d1 here 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 and it's just, oh, okay. So he gives some more moves. Bishop to e6. Ah, oh, that's actually important. Yeah, so protecting this. Again, this is everything forced. If we don't have rook takes h3, we are nearly lost here. So we have to do this, this, this. Now we give a check. And now suddenly... We take the rook and we have 50 rook more pawns. is hanging and we win the game, finally. So that was, again, that's nine moves. That was probably like the completely correct answer from start to finish would be to find that whole sequence, which again is very, very cool. Okay, this was our final puzzles. Noel, thank you so much for joining. Before letting you go, do you want to give to my audience a final tip to improve their chess? I would say whenever you solve a position like that, you might have understood I'm pretty tough on myself. I might have found the initial move sometimes, but I think I had gotten non-completely correct. So when you solve a position, Write down your full solution before you start moving around like we did when we discussed. Write down your full solution on a piece of paper and only then compare it with the solution of the tactic um, exercise, be it a book or be it online. So if you do it online, don't move until you have written down your solution. Because this way you really understand, did I really see all the resources? Did I see until the end? 
did I spot the important moves? And only this way you can like do solve an exercise as if be a game without extra knowledge or extra tricks. If you guys like this video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to improve your chess with the help of Noel, I will link you in the description his blog, his free ebook, and his video course. He also gave us a secret don't tell anyone <laughs> secret discount with Alessia 10 and if you guys want to see more of this let me know in the comments see you next time